red stuff coming out of them. You know, that's probably not good. Or we're at the shooting range. We're at a private shooting range and it has a cipher lock gate. And I've called 911, I put my phone down and I'm like, come find us, help us, help us, help us. And then the, the 911 operator says, the ambulance is at the gate, they can't find you, they don't know where you are. All right, so what, what do I have to do? I have to leave this guy and I have to go do something. I have to go unlock the gate, I have to direct the ambulance in, I have to put bandages on you. If I'm doing this, I'm not doing anything else. My hands are tied up. So how do we make sure that somebody has an airway? Well, we use a, a nasopharyngeal, and we're gonna demonstrate that. Uh, not today, but it'll... Do we do NPAs today or tomorrow? Yeah. Yes, okay, good. <laughs> so maintain an airway. Super simple, don't be scared. All right. All right, the last big one is the tension pneumothorax. Wow, that's a big word. It's a big word for you. Or TPX. What is tension pneumothorax? It's simply this. You have outside air builds up inside the pleural space or the chest cavity. Now everybody here, basic human anatomy, your chest cavity is like a big container. And inside of the container, you have organs. And you have these, these two things. You have built-in redundancy systems. I know that a lot of people here maybe, well, I hope you're not, but agnostic, I don't believe in God, intelligent design. If you don't believe in intelligent design, you're a fool. And let me tell you why. Because that body that you're currently inhabiting has built-in redundancy systems. It's like airplanes, right? Everything that is really super important that you have to have to stay alive, you basically have two of. You have a mouth as an airway, you have a nose as an airway. You have two lungs. Can you live with only one lung? Yes, you can. A lot of people are living right now that only have one lung. Well, I know you don't have two hearts. Shut up. <laughs> but uh, most of what you have is redundancy. You have a lot of redundancy. Did you know that, that all of your really important arteries are protected by bone? And they're deep inside? They're not on the surface? That you're, why is this so thick? to protect the great mushy stuff in there, right? So my point is this, you have, you have two lungs. Good juju, right? Why do we have, you know, one of them gets a hole in it. Can you live on one lung? Yes, you can, but here's what you can't do. If you have a, if you have a, a through and through from the outside inside, the surface gets broken. There's a hole in it, I don't care why, but there is. So outside air can get into that. You don't want that. So what do we do? Well, back in the old days, take their ID card and you tape it on and you leave a flappy thing, right? Or a cigarette packet or the rubber or the, the plastic from the, the whatever. And of course they would tell us to tape it on there. But did we have tape in the little green boxes? <laughs> Apparently we were just supposed, <laughs> tape was supposed to materialize on the battlefield. They're like, well, here's how you do it. You do it differently and you tape it and da 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 you're like, okay, yeah, great, woo, G.I. Joe. And you go out and then, oh, I don't have tape. Go back to the motor pool. They told us that that was the best thing to do, but they never like, thought to give us tape. Oh, you're just supposed to have it. But actually, good field marines got themselves 100 mile an hour tape. We, we found it and had it with us. But uh, my point is this. So number one, you seal it. Good juju, right? If I seal the outside, though, what's the problem? It's not a seal open. Yeah, I, I didn't go inside and repair the lung. I just stopped the outside air from getting in. So every time the patient goes, <sighs> oxygen goes into good lung, yay, goes into compromised lung, and there's a hole in it, and it escapes, and it starts building up inside of the pleural space or the chest cavity. Well, once so much of that outside air gets in there, it starts, what's right in the center right here? I know we pledge allegiance over here, but heart right here, there's, there's this heart thing, right? Does the heart like outside air coming into the pleural space and pushing on it and putting pressure on it? Heart don't like that. Eventually, heart's gonna say, enough of this crap, I'm out. And it's gonna V-fib. 
I don't want to get into medical things. But you're going to have an attack. It's going to go, stop! Get all this oxygen off me. How do we do that? Well, we'll teach you how to do that. So, now, are you going to die from a TPX in five minutes? No. TPX is something that it builds up over time. How many, how many people have been paying attention to all these campers and people that are being lost? And besides our friend John, who was supposed to be down here this weekend, but it was his anniversary, so his wife told him he was not traveling down here. So, uh, yeah, funny story. John, who you heard on the radio, uh, he was going to come down. And he, he called me uh, on the way to NRA. And because uh, he reminded his wife, he says, you remember I'm going to Biloxi next weekend. She goes, uh, that's our anniversary. I'm like, well, did you have any plans? Actually, I had a surprise trip for us, to, and I have a hotel and everything booked. So I better tell Paul I'm not coming. So, but besides my friend John, other people have been lost in the woods here lately. And even if, or you're hunting, has anyone ever hunted in their life? I have hunted. Okay. Is there a chance that you could become injured in the woods? Yes. You say, well, it's no big deal. Like a helicopter will come rescue us. All right, but. How long is it going to take the bird or the helicopter or the rescue to find you? That's where this becomes really important. Like, if we're out here in the parking lot, I'm not really worried about you dying of a TPX. But I mean, I'll, I'll stop the blood, keep your airway open, ambulance be here at 10, 15, load you up, you're going to be good to go. But if we're in, you know, East Texas or West Texas or Wyoming, I've hunted in Wyoming where we left camp and drove for two hours and didn't see a building or another vehicle to get to where we were going. And I remember thinking, if something goes down, it's going to be a while before anybody gets to us. So that's when this becomes very, very important, taking care of that. And the one thing, and we're going to deal with it a little bit later, is people say they get all bunched up about gunfights, like gunfights, gunfights, gunfights. You don't have to be in a gunfight to get a TPX. It doesn't have to be a bullet. It can be anything. Be a stick. How, um, there's these, this cage. There's this cage inside of you here, the rib cage, right? When when ribs break and crack and poke into the lungs, do the lungs like that? No, the lungs don't like that. So you could have your skin be intact. There's no holes on the outside, but a, a rib went and put a hole in your lung. So you got a TPX, even though there's no hole on the outside. Could you get a broken rib from smashing into a steering wheel or into a dashboard or? About your seatbelt. Yeah, or seatbelt or whatever. Uh, a sudden stop, you're going 55, you go from 55 to zero in one second. That does a lot of bad stuff to your, your rib cage. People get broken ribs, and, and that's why when you know they're doing patient surveys and so forth, like, ah, whoa, this guy's got a broken rib. You need to start watching for that. So the big three are major bleed, A number one. Keep all the red stuff inside. Choking loss of an airway. It doesn't matter how many tourniquets and bandages you put on. If they don't have an airway, it's kind of immaterial. And then a tension pneumothorax. Is everyone still with me? If you're not with me, raise your hand. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's play a little game.